Good morning. It is May 11. Live harmonic trading on a Monday. Welcome to the new normal. Let's get into it. What's going on, folks? S&P 500 on the four-hour chart is just continues to be up in this larger zone. A couple of bat patterns, and we have been targeting, and we'll still target the 2980 area up on this, uh, this zone. We're still, you know, look at how this thing's trending up into there. Every time we come off of a five minute, 30 minute, getting a little bit of rally, and then look at the four hour HSI triggers, just pauses every time. So we're still respecting that. We have a few other things that are up in this zone. And yes, we are close, came very close to hitting those targets of major resistance and you know what we know about these objectives especially hop levels so critical I, you know it's been for me uh you know over the last year or two it has just simply become a, a, a really a, just a, a project of lining up the levels let the software generate the levels and especially focusing on stuff like hop opportunities even in this crazy environment. And, and that's something where uh, I, I think it's the lesson that we're all learning. How do we make sense of this environment unless we're looking at the movements, the measurements to assess how far it can go? Here's the 30 minute S&P. I showed that four hour. And 30 minutes been really solid for a lot of fantastic patterns, swing patterns to get an idea of where we are within this that larger zone. So what do we have for today? We're looking at this deep crab in a type one, and we're right at the target. We just came off in the pre-market, nice solid reversal. S&P is down 30, 31. We were plus 30. And we are now at target one here. Let me remove the potential pattern and let's just isolate the bearish structure right here. That blue, it means that that shark is pending, hasn't completed yet. But if we just isolate it against the crab, yeah, deep crab, sorry. It's ideal textbook target one. Here's our accelerated move down. That's your accelerated trend line, as steep as that is. Not sustainable. And we'll use that 2890 level as early support. Take a look at what HSI is doing on the 30 minute. All three are oversold. So that popping out, confirming HSI, I think uh, most of you know what I'm gonna go for. Looking for that type two return today. And this pattern, again, with a hop level at 29.52, Gives us really clear levels, really nice zone for today into tomorrow. Uh, we're scraping support right now. Just came off of that target one, just as we started, and uh, now we're you know coming off of target one. Look for that full retest. That would bring us back in almost to even for the open. And twenty nine twenty five, a really nice number to be targeting for that open again. Thirty minute looks like. It's about done, the type one pullback. Here's the five minute. Uh, I'm showing too many patterns, but I think you guys get the structure. Let me clear this up and let's just isolate that crab again. This is the five minute. This is for the open. So really nice crab pattern off the top. Combined with that larger 30 minute, and we know the still in that larger weekly zone. Uh, sorry, four hour zone. So look at this here early. Here's a type one within that. We're at target one. 30 minute time frame says, okay, look for that retest up as high as 29.25. Look at the five minute pattern here. Our target two is right there at 29.25. That's going to be a critical number for later today and we're targeting this zone down here let me fix the time interval here i know that's hsi hasn't pulled up yet but 
Uh, let me fix that. But we're looking for that stabilization in the zone here. Give me confirmation. Again, really quick, let me review the sequence of the completion. I received a few questions. They were great. And again, keep them coming. But let me just isolate this one pattern. Let's look at the terminal bar first. Because uh, several people had asked me, okay, what is exactly we're looking for here? And I stress that we look for first the sun icon in the terminal bar, which is there. And I just increased that font size to blow it up. But a great tool, again, for those that haven't seen it, and I like to mention this from time to time, pull up your vertical zone line bar. That's even better. Okay, because that's really going to show where not only terminal bar, but where the, the lowest low of the zone is within as the, the consolidation is occurring. A lot of times it is the exact terminal bar, but it still creates the window where we're looking to the right. Okay, really focus on terminal bar. That's the easiest. And tell me where HSI is. I can't tell you right now because I just got to fix the... The data. Oh wait, one. Hi. Hold on one second. Shake. Bring up that time. In. There you go. Should be a thousand bars fixed. There you go. Sometimes that happens, folks. It will switch the date your time interval might switch depending on your platform. Um, always just go back if you have an issue like I just had. Just make sure it's a thousand bars going back fixed. That gives you uh, the best time sample uh, data size. So here we do have HSI popped out. All of this really is our ideal situation. Where's, let me reduce the size of the terminal bar so we can look at that signal. But again, this has all of the markings right here. Ideal type one, I'm gonna shrink that back down. All right, and there's our terminal bar. And then HSI. Again, look at that. There's better. Terminal bar there, little sun icon. Bang, there's our terminal bar, folks. This is the check back. Right there. Um, and let me show the illustration. Again, really important sequence because what it does is that it gets our eye trained for the opportunity. Not to be looking on the first test or an immediate execution in here, but rather in here. Yeah, a little bit of drawdown beyond that retest, but still within the whole sequence that we want to see. Looks like this. Here's the, where's that illustration? Bring that up here. Bring it up in one second. Thanks. With HSI check back, it looks like this. There you go. Now this is simplified because we usually see the completion of the pattern happen and then HSI might be a few bars. The larger consolidation might take three, five, seven bars. But again, it's almost like a delayed effect where our actual execution is lower and a little bit to the right. Hold on. Now we have this early and I want to show one other thing. We're targeting type one at this point every time. And that's really critical because having some kind of idea of where this will head out of the zone makes it easier to quantify the risk, set the uh, profit objective, and manage the trade. The other thing that we covered on thir Thursday was simply respecting that if this gives us a thrust up, requires more consolidation. We might take two shots at this opportunity. So that's the other thing we want to look at for this morning.
we just hit upon this. We're just kind of starting today. But look at the final thing of, do we break the trend line? Are we making progress out of the zone? That just started about mm, 10, 15 minutes ago. That's when we start shifting really where we're looking for the entry. Where's the real opportunity? Here's the completion of the pattern. There's confirmation. The yellow zone there, not only in terms of price, but time as well. Several bars to the right of that fact. And that's something I want people to keep looking, drawing their eyes on, looking for that opportunity. And again, if this thing pops, comes back, stop out, look for the next opportunity. This should be a solid continuation up to target one. Let's see how it plays out in up to 930. But again, this is textbook type one material. We've seen a lot of this, no matter what. I think today is going to be, you know, it seems like this whole market after the last week or two is about to go on fire again. Either to the upside or downside, because I think this thing is also fragmenting where NASDAQ, and let's jump over to NASDAQ right now, is diverging from everywhere else. And NASDAQ really comes down to those 510 stocks. But here's NASDAQ NQ. And I, I'll have a little bit more. I don't like to go go off on a rant and just you know start complaining or whatever unless I've got some patterns backed up by it. But uh, clearly, NASDAQ is outperforming everything else, and that comes down to those, those top 10, especially the top five, FANG stocks, Justin. But we're going to get to the FANG stocks in a second. NASDAQ is bumping up against this massive crab pattern that's been forming since last week. We target 93.50. Remember, our first target was about 8,900. Then we bumped it to 91. Now we're up against several things. So let's go to that four hour chart. We got a big butterfly here. Again, even on, here's an example of that first reaction off the butterfly. We talked about this and, and have been looking at this for a while. Makes the reaction, but not down to target one and comes back. This is where we're looking for yet another opportunity in the zone. In this case, we've had the crab, nice 1618 up here at the hop. We know this thing's been volatile, but let's focus our eyes on where's HSI in all this mess? What's it telling us? What about the other indicators? Because look, four hour chart across the board, even RSI, that's a little simple divergence right there. I'm not going to get too much into it other than we all can recognize that one, two, and now three with another HSI rolled out of the zone. We are getting top heavy here. 93.50 would be the ideal spot again later this week. This is just an ugly butterfly taking more time than expected within the daily. Uh, just take a step back, folks. And this is where I'm going to jump into the fang. We're up against this kind of very sloppy, deep crab pattern. That's not truly what I'm I'm reaching for. I just want to focus on the big 886, guys. Let's look at this big 886 up here. That's 93, 93. You've got a prior gap. You have HSI. Even if this thing tries to push higher. Okay, we're going to have, just by definition, we're going to run into a whole bunch of resistance that will have a reaction on the first test. Absolutely. And so we're running into it pretty hard, but still need to have a little bit more confirmation, but we're close. And that's what I want everyone to be aware of, is that, that this has been running hard, but I think this thing is going to run into some harmonic resistance, and pivot hard off of it. We've seen this kind of action before in gold, for example, and I'll get to that in a second. Gold has done a nice little pause for us. But NASDAQ NQ stocks, I'm going to just rip through one or two and show you where you can view the rest. Facebook, right? 
go to that. Most of these are daily, weekly structures, and the red means they've already completed. Now, what did I just say about all of these patterns? We're looking at the terminal of R, looking for the opportunity to the right. So the pattern just completed. We have a few bars up in here, pretty tight action. Looking, you know, fairly close at RSI being overbought. Amplified's already there. HSI would ideally love to give us one more signal. That's one. Here's two. Let's look at Microsoft. Another bat pattern. This one just hit uh, Thursday, Wednesday last week. Ideal bat pattern up here. Whole bunch of stuff. If we start to stall out, and I'm sorry about the data. Let me fix the HSI. Again, my my time default is jumping around. But what we're looking for is the confirmation out of these zones. And look, respecting this big, we're retesting all of these folks, all these prior highs. Everyone's looking at that. Last one, I probably should give you a few more, but here's Apple. And again, over and over again, what is the takeaway? Uh, the, the takeaway for me personally that I can implore to everyone listening to me right now and watching the recording is that when these patterns go and confirm automatically, probably today, some have already registered, we are looking for minimum reactions in one volatile environment. And if we know we've got harmonic reaction against these, could be sizable. That's what I'm talking about. That's how I want people to be thinking this week and with an urgency. Absolutely a lot going on here. Again, looks insane. Some of these moves have been astronomical. I will show uh, one that is just mind-blowing is PayPal. Huge breakout move. Almost parabolic. Okay. Don't want to be jumping in front of that. Not yet. Uh, again, at a minimum, we are up against and really starting to look at reactive levels that, that could hit hard. That is a, a rather huge move, but too rich at this point for my blood with a lot of bearish patterns flashing across the board. Here's Netflix, but look on a weekly. We got a butterfly. So a lot of these stocks, what I'm getting at, we have slightly higher levels at NASDAQ, maybe as high as 9,500 on a full retest. Maybe it even bumps up to new highs for a moment, but we're slamming up against a bunch of patterns that are going to give us type one reactions at a moment. And we don't see this. So real quick, let me just jump over and show where everyone can go to get with this is let's go to the Twitter. Go to my Twitter page and not oh, Wells Fargo. Go to my Twitter page, please. And we're going to and go to forward slash harmonic trader. Um, go through really Saturday. I spent the better part of uh, the morning, afternoon going through a lot of different scenarios, major, major markets, major patterns that. I think will help a lot of people. I've received a lot of individual questions about investments, 401k. What do you do? Are we gonna are we about to get a haircut or is this about to go do a double? Uh, that that those are the range of questions. But we look at patterns and we can look at a lot of these just straight up, respect what the patterns are saying. And we see a lot of different situations that are if we read them just the way we do every day as a day trade. We can look at these long-term levels and have a really clear understanding of where they're going. For example, here's Alcoa, aluminum. It's a perfect monthly chart going back 15 years with a major retest. Now, our hop level is minus 1245. Don't think it's going there unless it would be crude oil. But the point is, is that until this downtrend is violated, some kind of confirmation, we're still lower. A lot of these scenarios, long-term scenarios, 
good and bad, show you the change. Here's AT&T, really quick. Big, deep crab on a monthly, going back to 2002, folks. Come up. There's our type 1. Didn't get a full retest. How do we treat that? It needs to come all the way back down for a full retest for type 2. If I was going to read AT&T, if it was a 5-minute chart, I'd be waiting for that retest down at the 1618. Many, many of these going on. And I do encourage you to take a look at uh, all of these. Here's Home Depot. Home Depot, another daily on a bat. Retest, and I'll bring this up on our software. It says we wrap up going through these. Uh, if you folks want to look at a few more tomorrow, we can look at a few more. But here we go on our uh, weekly level. Um, I actually think that was monthly. Monthly, there's something, and daily, there's something that. There you go. All right, there's a monthly bat pattern back from 2008. And just do some empirical research. Just scan through and go through long, long-term charts. When these patterns materialize, it doesn't matter up or down. We're respecting the levels exclusively. Here's daily. Here's that same situation. Bat after bat after bat. All over the place. Let me bring up uh, one other one. Here, Here's some of the – here's that overlap. Go back there. So go through, take a look at all of those. I included that. Um, again, I really feel like this week, next week, we're going to see another shift. Now, speaking of shifts, let's go to gold. What's it doing? Big pause. It's amazing. 17, uh, 13, 17, 12, whatever, with our big bat. Right in the zone, folks. Right in the zone. 17, 12, 30. For how long we've been saying that? Okay, we completed the terminal bar two weeks ago. We've been looking for the pause. We're still in the pause. This is what I want to uh, really feature. Um, one of the, the things about the pause, the harmonic pause that I talk about, it is the general expectation of any harmonic pattern when it first hits the zone. There's a reaction, there's a pause, there's a change. Now, it doesn't necessarily always result in a profitable move, but some type of consolidation, some kind of shift is the way that I think about it. That's how I was able to optimize the pattern levels because if my numbers weren't right, usually I didn't get the reflection of a harmonic pause at a minimum. But now we see it, and we see it precisely at something like than 886 at 171230 when we are that exact. Why? Because the close and the individual price action is critical. If this was really strong, this would have closed above the 886 last week. It didn't. That's one little sign that I look for at the immediate completion, especially terminal bar. Here's terminal bar, folks. Terminal bar on this was uh Two weeks ago. And there you go. I'm going to increase that size. Mm -hmm. Let's go to 44. Oh, still pending. But this is, I know why. Because it literally just completed. It, this will shift with the terminal bar up to here last week. That's why. I'm going to check this out. Well, that should have actually gone red already. Came very close two weeks ago, but your terminal bar is actually up here now. No problem. But again, we're looking to the right here. Uh, as I started today's session with any pattern, monthly, five minute, waiting for the pattern to complete, looking to the right, and now we're looking for the confirmation. Or even at this point, our expectation is a reaction down to type 1, or I'll even uh, be more conservative and say 
okay, if it's a natural harmonic reaction, we'll consolidate a little bit in the zone. And those are some kind of early thoughts to be thinking, to have an idea, okay, even if this does a pause, where is it going to go? Well, maybe just consolidation in the zone. But we'll look for those signs as they unfold, terminal bar one, three, five. That's where we are. Uh, again, I don't know what my HSI keeps coming out, but going is not. But I just to show on the monthly, both amplified and RSI. They're still up there, well and well established in the overbought. That's going to need time. And again, I've I've been saying the whole all along that this was a pause area. And I'm I'm now saying, all right, we're looking for a spot where we'll come back because yeah, type one come down. But the corresponding rally that I've been anticipating is what I want to start targeting soon. If it's going to be in the next week or two or three, where if it's 1660 or as low as, say, 1600, it's not going to be much. And it's going to be the launch point for the larger move that everyone has been waiting for in gold. We will come back to this. Just stay tuned for that. Don't take your eye off of it. We're looking for the pause, but it could happen quite quickly. Let's go over to crude oil because it's the most annoying market in the world. I talked to my good buddy. He used to be the largest independent natural gas trader over the weekend. He really shared some great insights with me. Uh, I spent a lot of time with him on the natural gas floor in the early 2000s, uh, learning, consulting, you know, just taking it all in when there were still traders on the floor. And, you know, he's telling me that there's still this glut and we got to look at individual contracts. It's something definitely I, I agree with, but, um, you know, the incredible volatility is still going to happen here. It's to, it's to expect more of it. And it, again, this first bounce, is that's all it is really just little reactive move off the low here. Um, I still want to look at the downtrend. We're still firmly entrenched, even from the last few weeks like that. And for this week, again, crude oil, where are we in terms of our indicators? Well, HSI has managed to get up. Still moving sideways in the zone. Amplified is yet to confirm, but close. And I would be looking for a little impulsive test, maybe even a little 886 right off the prior high, like up, right up here. And that's right around the $30 level. And I think 30 is going to be a huge ceiling, not something I want to mess with. Um, crude oil also, we go to the monthlies on June or December is probably a better market to be looking at. Okay, we're still oversold in these uh, really quick. I know the markets, U.S. markets just open, folks. We'll go to there in one moment. NASDAQ's minus 60. S&P's down 28. Dow's down 250. No biggie. Here's crude oil on the December contract. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Let me check my time. I'll have to fix that HSI. I don't know why that's not generating. Um, and let's go to the weekly. There you go. Deep crab here on the December contract. That's what I was looking for. Again, look at where terminal bar comes in. Right at the low. Uh, both of our indicators, RSI and Amplified, are starting to come out, but still early. Well, let me see if I can get HSI to work here. I don't know what's going on with that today. My oh my, it keep my default time keeps jumping. Not sure why, but Yeah, I might have to come back to this. I don't know why that's not that's coming up. Let me come back to this, maybe jump to a different platform. Uh, but clearly, 
28.72, that big 1618, that's on the weekly off the top from the 2016 low. Still needs time here. The daily, let's go to that. A little bit more clear, a little clearer. Just run a trend line off of that last ditch down. Right off the high. A lot of people are rolling into that December contract selling June over December. And that's probably still going to go on. That's what will temporarily support it. But, uh, you know, crude oil on a longer term, that $30 level absolutely is going to cap it. And the other thing from a harmonic pattern perspective that I want everyone to consider structurally for a long time going forward, two things. One, I won't be happy until crude oil December contract hits $18. And that's something where we're in reactive mode here, but we're still sliding down. And I would not be surprised to see something like this and come down lower. And that hop, because it's a deep crab, the hop has just been a powerful level. Then I would absolutely keep that in the back of our mind that crude oil is still trending lower. And we have uh, verifiable long-term patterns that show us where it has to go. If that would be an ideal buy scenario, I would want to see HSI confirmation at 18 bucks at the hop level after some consolidation. The other thing about the crude oil market, and I really, this is all I'm gonna, gonna wrap up with this, is the fact that we have this harmonic pattern now confirmed on the weekly sets the whole price structure in stone of target one, terminal one, 4365. Filling that gap someday would be our long-term resistance and it will be a long day before we see oil work its way above that target one. I would suspect something with this, the severity of this decline into the zone of how much time that needs, you know, months. And I don't want to get into the, the larger story of the glut. I think we all can look at that, read at that, you know, sheer overwhelming supply numbers. But even in the best scenario, a type one reaction off of 43 would still be your best spot. And I say that because people have asked me if they think they should be buying energy stocks. And I, I, I refer them to the oil chart. And structurally, crude oil will need a lot of work before it's ever above 43 $44 substantially to be uh, uh, of a, a, a longer term opportunity. Yes, it's oversold, but it's not an opportunity. It's not a long-term opportunity. Maybe tradable, but this kind of structure and what has unfolded over the last few months, it's kind of sealed the deal in a number of situations like this. Okay, folks, 9.35. Let's get over to what the market's doing. What are they going to do today? Right now, um, S&P trading right at 2,900, coming off of the... Sh the the crab level, and we have a few things. I'm showing all of the patterns here. This was, this is our larger zone, a type one crab. Let me clean it up. I'm gonna leave everyone with this. Okay, there you go. Let me show the last one. Here's this crab for today, target. This reaction up to type one, 2920. That's what we started with. Look at how we had a little check back. That's the shark. Let's look at the crab, please. Let me get that. We got two patterns going on here. This is the shark, but we have what we featured and started with today which was the crab. There you go. Not the bat, the crab, sorry. Got a, a whole bunch of different things. This crab. And uh, ideal type one, we saw how that came back. Look at also the, how this thing checked back right at the 1618. And that's something as well of a, a little bit of a, 
consolidation move as you work your way out. You usually have an overshoot. But yes, we have to deal with this consolidation in the zone. It's probably the, one of the most challenging uh, situations for traders if we're trying to get out of that zone to get to target one where our mind is going through a million different possibilities. We focus on the trend line, we focus on the target, and we can focus on indicator progress like we've seen and started with. But it's still a type one trade. We're still targeting 29.11, okay, and looking for that confirmation up at that target. This is a reaction trade. That's how we treat it. But we did start. The other thing that we featured today, again, was being aware of the 30-minute crab pattern up here, right there. There you go. This deep crab for a retest. Why? Because that's a perfect type one that completed and now we're going to realize the type two retest. And that's something we'll get back into tomorrow. We'll look at, well, let's look how that five minute versus the 30 minute plays out. But these patterns give us really clear zones for today. Um, Justin, great question. How do you play? Are there strategies to play the type one? The, the target one, like we just saw here, okay? And he's asking, well, can we play if, if we understand that this is a type one trade reaction and we see that reversal off a of target one, can we play that back into the zone? Absolutely. The thing that you wanna look for is comparative time frame. And we had something really nice on the five minute Okay, had that bullish pattern that lined up right back down in there. That's the kind of thing. Here's that bullish pattern. That's the kind of thing you want to look for. Give me a smaller pattern, smaller time frame at that larger number. And you compare those two time frames. For those that came in late, please watch the beginning of today's session. We started here. This is working out in ideal type one fashion and strongly recommend just review the first several minutes of where we covered this. Uh, this is the kind of pattern I've seen over and over again, tick charts, 233 tick, five minute if you wanna go a little bit longer term, but just phenomenal action like this. And again, the sequence of the confirmation where the pattern completes, then confirmation, that helps reduce the drawdown. My last thing I want to show everyone, I posted a, a, a how-to video over the weekend and want to share it with everybody. It is a, um, it, we used, we looked at the harmonic pattern collection on TradingView. And I showed how, looking, looking at Heiken Aishi candlesticks versus regular candlestick charts. And I'll show you where to go. Just go to my YouTube channel, Harmonic Trading, and it's in the videos. I will also send it out in the email to go out for today's session. Now, really interesting, and I just want to show everyone how um, really illustrative these are. Here is a, a really nice, a nice crab pattern on the QQQ, and again, candlesticks are phenomenal and I still use them exclusively, but let me show you just one way to look at it. Okay, there's the Heiken Ashi chart. Now tell me how much easier it is to interpret the continuation or the price action up to our two targets with the Heiken Ashi candles. Here's the, let's just go right to and show you, here's the trading view harmonic pattern collection, and most of our other platforms have this built in, okay? Where uh, MetaTrader, eSignal, there's that bullish bat. And let's take a look. Bitcoin had a really stiff reaction off of that 10,000 target. That was the type one. Uh, level from both patterns and again looking for just pullback here. We know the big event is this week the having 
but I, I think the larger situation of what's going on is we want to look, continue to look for opportunities in this. There's the four hour. Okay, regular candlesticks. Uh, let me go to the show the weekly chart. And I did get a question actually, last other thing, uh, especially with the trading view. If you're not getting the same patterns that I'm showing, do send me a note and send me a chart because you can go to my post and see what I'm putting up. You should be able to recreate that on your own screens. I'm not doing, I have, I'm running the same software that everyone else has. If you don't have the software, please get with at least the free trial. We can provide a trial for all of them except for TradingView because of the way it's set up. But check out this. I think MetaTrader is a great place to start. Now, there's the candlesticks. Really nice on that bat pattern. Here's the larger bat pattern that we have man mentioned that both of these really putting a harmonic floor under Bitcoin. But let's just take a look at the Hike and Ashy candles. Especially, look at the first one. Here's that first bat pattern. And this is something with the type one trades that uh, I mentioned in that video. But we can see that continuation so much more clearly. Run a trend line off of that. And if we know that this is a reaction, okay, and Heiken and Ashi is failing, rolling over, clearly fail continuation. It's those kind of simple visuals that make our decisions easier. So do take a look and, um, you know, go over to Harmonic Trader, get set up, go to Harmonic Pattern Collection. Uh, anybody that is in here that's not taking advantage of this, get with the software at HarmonicPatternCollection.com. Check out all our videos and just get with the program. A lot's going to be unfolding this week, folks. We'll get back here tomorrow, same time. There's the last update of ES. Big levels for the week, 29.25. That's the big target for today. We'll see how that works out tomorrow. Have a great day, everyone. Go get them.